the Logic and Language video series introduced logic as a way of representing and analyzing sentences, but I skirted around questions of truth and establishing good arguments. I'd like to take a stab at those topics, those skills, in this video. We've paid attention to the structure of sentences and used symbolic logic to represent that structure. On that front, logic provides a handy way to sort out and clarify our statements. Please make sure to go through those videos. If you understand that material, you can see that the logic of a statement like, for example, water is a liquid, may be represented as follows. For all x, if x is water, then x is a liquid. Now that you have that kind of grasp on logical statements, you can extend your logic to whole arguments with multiple statements. When I say argument, I'm afraid you may be hearing heated exchange of words, but I mean instead a series of statements made in support of an assertion together with the assertion drawn from those statements. The supporting statements are, are premises of the argument, and the assertion that follows from them is the conclusion. Right now I want to convince you that coffee is a food, not a beverage. Yeah, you heard that right. I'll start with some sentences we both accept. Coffee is a bean. Remember your logic here, I'm saying that for all x, if x is coffee, then x is a bean. Beans are food. So it follows that all coffee is a food. I brought you to a conclusion using two supporting premises, but you might think I'm pulling something over on you here. Maybe you can't even put your finger on it. Hold your criticism for now and consider the structure of my argument first. Is the form of my argument any good? Well, what is its form? Let's abstract the argument to A is B, B is C, therefore A is C. You'll find that however you fill in this structure, the argument seems to work. I bet you're even smart enough to see why you really are, so let's move along. If, on the other hand, I tried to fill out the argument with a structure like premise 1, A is B, premise 2, A is C, conclusion, therefore B is C. It turns out that the argument doesn't work. Apply this form to a few cases and you'll figure out pretty quickly that it fails. Arguments with a working structure are valid. Arguments that are broken get the negative label invalid. It would be premature of us to stop there and declare that we have a watertight argument. We've checked our structure, but we haven't thought about whether we've filled our form with correct statements. The premises can be true or false, and the conclusion true or false as a result. I could propose that all soups are cold. Anything that's cold can't burn your mouth, so clearly soups can't burn your mouth. The argument has a valid structure, but one of its supporting premises is false, which impacts the conclusion I'm trying to draw. If our argument is valid and has true premises, it's a sound argument. This may strike you as straightforward, but it's easy to get lazy or manipulative with your logic and end up producing or being convinced by unsound arguments. Or should I say it's easy for the other guy, but not for so logical a mind as yours. Notice that either truth or validity can impact the soundness of an argument. Unsound arguments include an invalid argument with true premises, a valid argument with one or more untrue premises, and an invalid argument with untrue premises. Only a valid argument with true premises is sound. A tidbit you may be aware of, but our argument structure introduced above, A is B, B is C, so A is C, is called a syllogism. So my coffee is food is a valid syllogism with, I will assert, true premises. If that's all correct, the argument is sound. Not all arguments are syllogisms. Notice that we have two conditional premises, if A then B, if B then C, and the conclusion follows from these conditions, therefore if A then C. We could just use one conditional premise, like if A then B. If we assert in a second premise that A, we conclude that, you guessed it, B. I haven't looked outside these arguments to support them. I just relied on the structure and persuasiveness of the premises to make my point. The meaning and words are all there for you to evaluate, and if these are good, then the conclusion's good too. That's deductive reasoning, and the resulting argument is called a deductive argument. Once I start checking my facts outside my bare words, things get trickier. If I want to support my assertion that coffee is beans, I have to use inductive reasoning to look at specific information in the real world and make abstract generalizations about all coffee, even though I could never hope to check if what I'm saying is true even of a fraction of the world's coffee. Such claims are probabilistic and open, until I can demonstrate that they are false, and arguments that take this line of reasoning are inductive. For instance, I can't demonstrate that my first premise is true of all coffee ever, but I can state things that probably hold, which requires inductive reasoning. 
you might instinctively perform inductive reasoning by checking against your own experience. But there are even more methodical approaches. We called valid and true deductive arguments sound. When we come across inductive arguments, it's preferable to talk about cogency. A cogent argument is valid and has probable premises. I've thrown around the words true and truth. If you're like most of us, you intuitively feel you have some understanding of what those words mean. The difference between deductive and inductive thinking may have raised a few issues, but let's tackle the issue of truth straight on. Digest each one of the following questions and use them to get a broad view on the different perspectives of truth in logic and philosophy. Is a statement true when it aligns with, is consistent with, and doesn't contradict other true statements? Is a statement true when it corresponds to something in the real world? Can certain statements be asserted as true in and of themselves, even self-evidently? Will truth then deductively follow from these assumptions? Is a statement true when it proves to be useful or practical? Is a statement true when enough people argue or believe that it is true? Is truth not an actual property of a statement at all, but something else? Can true or the truth ever be predicated in a meaningful, non-redundant way? Whatever your intuitions, what do you make of my coffee is a food argument? Do you think it's sound? In the next video, I'll share a perspective on logical fallacies and take another look at that argument.